The relationship between religion and knowledge dates back to the early days of Islam. One example of this relationship shows how the very essence of knowledge was embedded in the identity of the religion since its birth in the chapter of Alaq or the Clot in English, where it says, Read in the name of your Lord who created. He created man from the clot of blood. Read and your Lord is the most generous, the one who taught by pen. He taught man that which he knew not. The Holy Quran goes further to mention certain natural phenomena like the movement of the celestial bodies in the chapter of Yasin, verse 37, where it says, And a sign for them is the night. We remove from it the light of day, so they are left in darkness, and the sun runs on its fixed course. That is the decree of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. Although some modern scientists might argue the accuracy of these claims, at least it gives us a hint that whoever is making these claims knows much about the world and how it works. From the 8th century to 13th century AD, the world witnessed a significant revolution in all fields of knowledge, particularly in the Islamic world. Today, that period is known as the Islamic Golden Age. Some scholars propose that it is best called an Arabian Golden Age, perhaps because the movement started from the Arabian city of Baghdad. While that is true, the pioneers of the movement were a mixture of different ethnicities from basically all parts of the Mediterranean and it was also sponsored by the Islamic Caliphate, so I guess calling it an Islamic Golden Age will not hurt that much. There has been a lot of religious influence behind this historic movement, the various Quran and Hadith injections which value education and emphasize the importance of acquiring knowledge, played a vital role in influencing the Muslims in their search for knowledge and the development of the body of science. One example of this in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Mujadila, verse 11, says, Allah will raise those who believed among you and those who were given knowledge by degrees. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what you do. And in Surah Al-Fatir, verse 28, it says, It is only those who have knowledge among his servants, via Allah. It even gets as specific as urging the believers to contemplate the heavens and earth, where it says, those who remember Allah while they are standing, sitting or lying on their sides, and reflect upon the creation of the heavens and earth. Our Lord, you did not create this without purpose, so save us from the punishment of the fire. After all this deliberately powerful inspiration that is meant to push believers towards the acquisition of knowledge, no wonder that we had the likes of Nasir al-Din al-Tusi, the theologian, philosopher, physician, architect, engineer and scientist, the polymath of Persian descent who created very accurate tables of planetary motion and even critiqued the Ptolemaic astronomy and the likes of Al-Khawarizmi, another polymath who famously invented the algorithm. Talk about Ibn Sina or Avicenna in English, the renowned Persian philosopher, physician and polymath who wrote Kitab al-Tibbi fil Qanun the canon of medicine in English, which was used as a standard medical textbook in Europe for centuries. This is just a tiny drop in the sea of prominent Islamic scholars who were illuminated by the light of Islam and inspired by its teachings to unleash the secrets of God's hidden wonders. So with all these incredible records at hand, we can say there is no dispute or enmity between Islam and science. Even Christianity did not reject everything that science introduced. Yes, there have been some controversies and incidents that occurred throughout history where some Christian scholars, blinded by religious fanaticism, used the power of church to persecute scientists like Michael Servetus, who was tortured and burned at stake on the shores of Lake Geneva, and Galileo, who was sentenced to house arrest for the rest of his life for publishing his evidence that supported the Copernican theory that says Earth revolves around the Sun. His research was instantly criticized by the Catholic Church for going against the established scripture that places Earth and not Sun at the center of the universe. And the reason for this dissonance between the Christian faith and science has its roots in the Old Testament due to some textual corruptions. For example, 
In the book of Genesis regarding Adam, paradise and the forbidden tree, the serpent tricked Adam and Eve into eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, despite God's prohibition. This is why the Christian community used to consider any kind of knowledge that seems to contradict the Bible as heresy. But in the Islamic faith, the story is totally different. When Allah created Adam, he told him all the names and asked the angels to prostrate themselves before him. And the Sunnah of the Prophet has told us that the forbidden tree was that of greed and avidity. That is something connected with the animality of Adam, not with his humanity. So looking through this lens, we can say that religion does not reject scientific inventions and endeavors in any way. And the Islamic Golden Age is a powerful testimony to that. I will end this session with a beautiful statement by a renowned Islamic theologian and philosopher, Sheikh Murtada Mutahari, whose martyrdom commemoration we happen to be in these days. He made a statement describing the intimate relationship between religion and science in his book Fundamentals of Islamic Thoughts. Both science and faith empower man, but science provides the power of discrimination, while faith provides the power of integration. Both science and faith are beautiful, but science represents the beauty of reason, while faith embodies the beauty of spirit. Science is the beauty of thought, and faith is the beauty of feeling. Both science and faith offer security to man, but science provides external security, while faith provides internal security. Science offers protection against illnesses, floods, earthquakes, and storms. Faith offers protection against worry, loneliness, feelings of helplessness and futility. Science brings the world into greater harmony with man, and faith brings man into greater harmony with himself. That's it for today. If you find any mistake or something you regard as misinformation, please do not fail to reach out to me in the comments below or through my email in the bio. I will be more than happy to take note. Peace be upon you and bye.